Hi, and welcome to lesson 11 on long distance communication. In this lesson, we will give you the context of how we can communicate over long distances uh, in classical networks and uh, see how that fits within the context of quantum communication as well. Step one, introduction. So let's consider a little bit of historical background to long distance communication. And let's go to the year of uh, 1852. So just before the widespread of the telegraph, communication was extremely slow. To give you some idea how slow it was, if you wanted to send a letter from London, let's say to New York, it took around 12 days to arrive. If you wanted to send it to Sydney, then you had to wait 73 days for the letter to be delivered. So the telegraph uh, immediately uh, sparked uh, the dream of a transatlantic submarine cable because people realized that if they can use the telegraph to communicate uh, over land so quickly, they should be able to connect internets with submarine cables as well. So in 1850 uh, was laid the very first submarine telegraphic cable connecting England and France. Uh, that worked fine, so immediately people uh, wanted to lay it across the, the Atlantic Ocean. And for the next 15 years, there were many failed attempts. But what this sparked was a, a real focused mathematical analysis of very long distance communication. Then finally, in 1866, the first successful transatlantic telegraphic cable was laid and used. And by 1871, only a few years later, all the continents except for, the, for Antarctica were connected. connected. And then between 1902 and 1906, the Trans-Pacific cables were being laid and they connected the mainland US with Hawaii, Guam, and later Philippines, and finally Japan. On the other hand, uh, after the telegraphic cable came telephone cables. And in 1956, we had the first transatlantic telecommunications cable called TAT-1. And this telephone cable was able to handle 51 consecutive telephone conversations. Compare that with two decades later, the last of the telephone cables, T87, which could handle a staggering 8,000 telephone conversations consecutively. And uh, after this came the fiber optic cables. As we saw uh, in the previous lesson, in 1988, one of the first, um, fib the first fiber optic cable called T88 was laid and increased the bandwidth to 40,000 uh, the equivalent of 40,000 telephone communications, telephone conversations. So in this lesson, what we are going to mainly focus on is what were the main considerations when designing these cables, and particularly bandwidth and noise. So bandwidth tells us basically how much information can uh, a cable or fiber carry. And this depends on both the physical properties of uh, the fiber itself, as well as how clever we are when it comes to encoding this information before it gets transmitted. So, with modern techniques of dense wavelength division multiplexing, we're able to reach some staggering speeds. For example, in a standard cable over the distance of uh, 6,600 kilometers, we can reach speeds of something like 65 terabits per second. In a more specialized cable and over shorter distances, this can be increased to over 150 terabits per second. And over very short distances, uh, we achieve speeds of one petabit per second. I mean, this is something incredible. A terabit, just for your reference, is 10 to the 12 bits, while a petabit is 10 to the 15 bits. Of course, no system is 100% efficient. And whatever we put in is not uh, what uh, we're going to get out at the end of the uh, cable. So we must consider what are the main sources of loss in optical fibers. And we will consider these following five losses. One is dispersion. The next one is absorption, scattering, bending, and coupling. The result of all of these sources of loss is that our signal becomes attenuated. Meaning if we put some uh, uh, signal at, uh, as an input with some power, what we get out uh, as the output will have less power. So it's very important to know 
how much of the signal becomes attenuated and how we can prevent this attenuation or combat this attenuation. So in this lesson, we will first, in step two, con talk about the dispersion in optical fibers. Then we will consider uh, the other sources of, atten of attenuation. Then we will move on to overcoming these losses. And finally, we will consider what these sources of losses present in terms of challenges for, uh, in the context of quantum communication.